Welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find help and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. No dream is too big. Your goals are yours, feelings are yours, and this isn't something that you should hide from. It's scary, but there's always, always a way out. There's always a way to make it better, and if you just need some encouragement, I am absolutely more than happy to help. Hey guys, welcome back to Starting Over Stronger, Divorce Survival and Recovery. Here we are again, talking about divorce and money. This is one of those topics that we can approach from so many different angles with several different experts because it's just that vast and that important. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about budgeting and how to get the help you need when this is not your gift. Amy Stetzler is joining me on the show today. Amy has been a credit advisor for eight years. From that knowledge, as well as her knack for numbers, she has developed a budget coaching business that many women going through divorce recovery are finding very helpful as they are struggling to crunch all the new numbers during and after their transition. And so today we're going to offer you some pointers on getting you started on handling your budget, let you know what budget coaching is and how it might be the knight in shining armor that you thought your ex was going to be. <laughs> Hey, welcome, Amy. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Well, let's just start off the conversation by describing for the listeners what a budget coach is. Okay, so what I try to do is take the fear out of finance. There is a lot of emotional attachment to finances. They can be so scary and, you know, everything is so new and different and changed and to be on your own is is. It can be quite terrifying. So mm -hmm. what I try to do is just show you a different way. It's not necessarily to, you know, cut out that daily latte or whatever your the thing that makes you happy is. It's more along the lines of showing you how to use what you have to better your future, to better yourself, to make things easier. Uh, if, if it's a matter of there's there's a lot of debt, we can start to funnel it down. Um, mm -hmm. Your insurance rates are based off of your credit score. So Basically getting everything lined up, higher credit scores, lower debt, funneling everything down, making things simple to where you can give yourself a raise. So rather than going out and looking for more money, mm -hmm. it's, it's right there. It's right there in front of you. We just have to figure out how to get it. So maybe possibly turning your thoughts because your thoughts turn into what you want. So mm -hmm. everything is, is completely positive. I just look at everything from your standpoint, put myself in your shoes. Knowing what I know, um, I've got a bankruptcy, I've got a car repossession, I almost had a foreclosure, and then started thinking positive. Sat down with my mother-in-law one day and crying and crying every night to sleep, and she taught me a lot, and I just started learning, and my job taught me a lot. So between life experiences and asking a lot of questions to those around me, I've I basically devised a plan, and it's, it's individual for everybody. Awesome. Well, that was actually going to be my next question. So you had mentioned to me at some point when we were talking about defining a woman's goal and using that to sort of work back from there. You, you, I think you called it a solution focused approach. Yes. So talk about that a little bit. So everything I do is solution focused. A lot of, you know, life happens to us and sometimes we just got to buckle up and hang on for the ride. And we don't really have a lot to say. We just, we just do, we get in survival mode. Mm -hmm. So rather than, you know, it doesn't, I, I'm more than happy to listen to the story. But a lot of that is figuring out what your goals are. I want I want you to daydream. I want you to daydream your biggest daydream of your life. I don't care what it is. Mm -hmm. If you want to have $10,000 in the bank and that's your daydream, let's make it happen. If you want to be a homeowner on your own, let's make it happen. If you want to buy a car on a 0% interest rate, I can help you do that too, which I just did in November. I bought a 0% interest car from a friend of mine. And uh it's just, it's what your goals are, and then mm -hmm. we work backwards. So it's it's totally goal-oriented. The, the negatives in the past. So basically, I look at it like a vehicle. You're sitting in your car, you're looking at your windshield, right? Mm -hmm. Your windshield is so big and broad, and your possibilities are endless. And you can look forwards and to the sides and everywhere else. If you look at your rear view mirror, it's little. It's mm -hmm. little for a reason, because that's your past. Yeah. So start looking at the big stuff out your window. That's great. I love that. Well, so as a budget coach, you're going to help women understand how to handle their income and expenses in a way that offers them some power and control back in their life, it sounds Absolutely. like. Absolutely, yes. Awesome. 
Well, it's probably no surprise that a whole lot of us hate budgets, and it's basically because we think they're going to restrain us, cause us pain, deprive us, confuse us, and and yet you're just teaching women, and maybe men too, I don't know, I, we didn't yeah. really talk about that, uh, how a budget can actually set us free and empower us to do more and feel better than we ever have about money. Absolutely. So I look at it like, instead of being afraid of it, I get excited. You know, I get excited because I'm like, wow, look it, I can pay this bill on my own. Or I just paid off my vehicle by myself. Or, you know, I get to make a house payment. Not I have to make a house payment. I get to go buy new tires. You know why? Because I've been working hard and because things are falling into place for me. So, mm-hmm. you know, just try to change the outlook on things because our thoughts become reality. Yeah. So I think that's important. Well, and you mentioned it earlier, and I want to talk a little bit more about the emotion that's tied up in all of this. You know, obviously fear is one of them, but but what else would you say, you know, what are the emotional ties to money? I feel like nobody talks about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's like uh, religion. It's one of those things that you're not supposed to talk about in public, but why not? Yeah. Why not? Why can't we all deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by all means. Yeah, so, you know, I'll tell anybody my life story if you want to hear it. It's, it's long, and there's a lot to it. But that's what makes us who we are. And, you know, our grandparents bought houses in cash for $4,000. Our parents, you know, they they finance things, but it's different. Mm -hmm. We have to rely on credit for so much. You know, our kids to go to college need us to Mm co-sign. There is a better way to do it. I mean, if you you got somebody getting ready to go into college, you can add a, you know, add them to a couple credit cards so they can build their own credit. So just breaking down the emotional barriers and making finances and money and budget not scary, but making it kind of fun in a sense. It's it's a game changer. It's it's a really good thing. The emotional ties, you know, if you have one kid or six kids, you you struggle. It's scary. It's a scary thing to not know, you know, if you're going to be working through this pandemic or, you know, if something happens to your vehicle. There's a huge emotional tie to that. So what I try to do is just ease it and break down those those barriers and ties to make it more friendly, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to go too deep here, but something came to mind as you were talking and that was um, something I heard and and I've never really taken the time to decide if I agree with this or not. So I'll just say it and then you tell me what you think. Poverty is a mindset? Yeah. Oh gosh. Yes. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. So I started listening to a lot of Abraham Hicks and she, she's a She's very motivational and positive, and as I was listening to her and learning to manifest basically my perfect life, I realized that, you know, we get stuck on these these thoughts that just keep playing over and over and over, like a record on repeat over and over. And then I started thinking, oh my gosh, there's there's a different way to do this, and that's where I came up with this solution rather than just whatever your current situation is. Mm-hmm. Tomorrow's a new day. You know, there's there's waves of an ocean that flow in and out for a reason. Mm-hmm. So money flows in and out just like the ocean waves do, and you can just learn to do it different. But yeah, absolutely, I I think that poverty is definitely a huge part of that is emotional, and it's brought down from generation to generation in some cases. And you know, we can break all of that. You just yeah. gotta work through it. So it sounds like it's basically a negative programming. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Well, so as you're helping people crunch numbers, you're kind of also helping them to assess some emotional or mental blocks that are maybe in the way of their ability to do that well. So that's pretty cool. Well, I know that there's probably something here for a lot of people that we've never considered, and that's going to help a lot. So now uh, money and specifically budgeting, of course, is the overarching issue that we are talking about today and that we all have to deal with as we go through divorce. Another issue that everyone has to deal with is housing. And as a licensed realtor in Kansas and Missouri with a specialization in divorce, this is my area of expertise. And it's one way, in addition to divorce coaching, that I help women through divorce. And not only do I help her to find a place to live, whether that's a way to keep the current house, buy another one, or rent something, whichever is the best plan for her physically, financially, and emotionally, but as an RCSD trained divorce collaboration specialist, I'm actually trained to do much more than the average agent during the divorce process if one party wants to keep the house. And how that works is if they want to sell, I can still definitely help with that and work hard to get them the most possible for the house to maximize their equity split. 
Whereas, unfortunately, too many times they just hire whatever agent comes to mind and that agent is unaware of the importance of discretion with regard to divorce and the house sale becomes more like a fire sale and the agents don't protect the critical factor of divorce. So buyers know they're desperate and know that they'll take less and be glad to just be done with it. Right. And it's just not necessary if it's handled differently. And additionally, if I'm able to connect with either party in the divorce, ideally the one wishing to keep the house, before they close the discovery process or before they mediate or go to court. I can actually provide one or both parties with a four-part approach that I call enhanced due diligence or the house homework. And this fully informs the true value and equity of the home and allows them to make a fully informed decision about whether or not to keep the house and if that's in their best interest. The sad fact is that 89% of family law judges agree that not enough is being done with regard to the house valuation during divorce. And the result of that is often one of the following foreclosure, bankruptcy, failed refinance, or a failed loan origination, or in other words, a failure to qualify for a home loan. And these four consequences can be financially devastating to a newly divorced person when they're at that point in their life when they can least afford to deal with a financial crisis. Most divorcing homeowners think their attorneys know everything about everything and that they're doing everything necessary to serve their best interest. And they may or may not be wonderful, hardworking, and conscientious attorneys, but they're legal professionals. They're not financial professionals. They're not real estate professionals. They don't know what they don't know. And sometimes they do make the wrong assumptions, like appraisal minus mortgage balance equals equity. And to save time, I'll skip the detailed explanation of how an appraisal report excludes two critical factors in the determination of a value on the home. And I'll just tell you that those two factors are the number one and two ways that realtors determine the actual sales value of a home. So why do appraisers completely overlook them? Because it's a liability to them and it's not their job. They literally just measure the house and compare it to the others on the street, but they factor out the title and the condition. And rarely do you ever find an attorney who addresses insurability or mortgage guidance prior to finalizing the divorce. So to be honest, I kind of doubt most people even think of any of those things as something that actually matters to them, but yet they can make thousands or tens of thousands of dollars of difference to the property division on the divorce. And one that uh, judge, basically once a judge signs a court order, the decisions that are made are permanent. So say you kept the house and you find out after you finalize the divorce that your ex had a tax debt or a contractor's lien against the title. Your post-divorce financial status was not assessed by a mortgage professional or there's a crack in the foundation or a 20-year-old air conditioner or a roof that needs replaced because the ex had filed a roof claim and pocketed the insurance money without your knowledge. Guess whose problem all of that is now? And guess who's going to have to hire an attorney again and face another legal battle if they expect to not have to pay for those expensive issues or ever recover the value in the home? that the ex was so generously willing to give them. I wish I could say I'd made all of that up, but each and every one of those reflects an actual story that someone had to live through, probably lots of someone's, and it was completely avoidable. By working with an RCSD realtor early in the divorce process, you find out all of this stuff, and you know what it costs to work with me on all of these details. Not a dime. <laughs> so now enough about me and what I do with the real estate process during divorce. But let's talk about how you can get involved here. So we know that the lenders lend the money and the realtor helps them find the house or to list the house, as well as everything else we just talked about if you get an RCSD realtor. But how are you able to come alongside and offer additional financial assistance that they may not get elsewhere or maybe that they need at a different time or pace? So I have a background in mortgages. I was a marketing rep for a title company, and I've been a mobile notary signing agent. So I drive around and close mortgage loans, and I've been doing that for 13 years, as well as eight years in the credit 
you know, credit repair, credit advising industry, and budget coaching. So I've, I've got a very general knowledge, and I came to the conclusion one day that, you know, the, real, the realtor's job is homes, buying and selling homes, helping advise with homes. The lender's job is to lend. Mm -hmm. There's really not a, a specified area for a person who needs advice how to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. Let's say let's say it was a woman and she had her husband did all the finances. He was on the mortgage. He had all of the credit cards. He had all of everything. And she had nothing in her name because, you know, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and your job at that moment in time was to raise children. There's really nobody out there to take the time to hold the hand and be like, okay, look, this is how you establish positive credit. This is how you do it in the most cost-effective way for you and your situation. This is how, okay, now that you've got your credit established, this is your time frame. This is everything that you need to be successful for your goals. So... I want to be that advisor. Let the realtors realtor, let the lenders lend, and let me be the shoulder to lean on and the person to come to for any questions because that's actually what I enjoy doing. Actually, I talked to a friend of mine and he, he told me, he said, you know what, find something that you really enjoy doing and learn how to make a living at it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've done and I love it. I love what I do. I love helping people because there are so many things out there that we just, we don't have the ability to do on our own. We don't know where to go. And everything that I needed help with, I had nobody um, that could help my family and I get through like stuff. So now that I know everything I know, I just I feel like I want to spread the word and help as many people as I can. Well, that help is definitely needed. And, you know, some of the specifics that I think people probably would be well to know about what you do is like, for example, um, debt to income ratios, understanding or repairing credit. How does credit affect home buying? So talk about a few of those things. So all of that, your debt to income ratios is basically how much money you have coming in versus how much money you have going out. Uh, when you, when you get a mortgage, there are so many acronyms, your DTI, your PMI, and just everything. I, I've got a very good understanding of all of that. And let's say, okay, great. You do make the good money. You, you make enough money to buy a home and all that. Do you want to pay your home off in 15 years instead of 30? I can show you how to do that. Uh, do you want to, do you have student loans? A lot of people don't even realize that you can consolidate your student loans into your mortgage. So let's say, let's say you consolidate your student loans into your mortgage and you're saving $500 a month by the consolidation. You know, you put $250, $300 back in towards your mortgage's principal. You're in the green. You're saving money at the front. You're saving money at the back. You got more money in your pocket. It's a win situation all around. So it's, it's basically just breaking down all those barriers, explaining what all those really scary acronyms mean that nobody truly understands. Mortgage insurance is a big one. The difference between the loan programs, I mean, you've got VA, our USDA, you've got FHA, you've got conventional. A lot of people don't understand the difference. Which ones are more expensive? What do your debt to income ratios need to be to get this or that? Your credit scores directly affect your interest rate. So I can be the one to guide you, hold your hand, to show you through all of that to where you actually understand. And then at the end of that, help you to be able to make manipulations on your own mm -hmm. to keep yourself on track. Okay. Well, you know, credit is, I think, pretty elusive for a lot of people. I mean, even if one, just trying to figure out what your credit score actually is, you know, versus, you know, also just understanding why it goes up, why it goes down, what causes the, you know, what are the cause and effects of, of this? Is that something that you can give us just a very basic idea of? Absolutely. So I just hit an 801 credit score. I'm 40. It took me a long time. And I'm so proud to say like I did it because I want to practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. So credit is, is a game. It's all a game. It's very complex game. Um, there's Everything's based off of an algorithm. So a lot of people think, well, I don't have any debt. I should have really good scores. Well, that's not the case because you have to prove to the credit bureaus that you can make your payments on time and that's how you get a score. Mm -hmm. So it used to be, you know, you go to school, you do your homework, you get your grade. It's the same thing with credit. You do your homework, you get your grade. You have open lines of credit, you get your credit score. You don't have to be in debt to have good credit. And my job is to show you that, show you how you can have really good credit and have very low to minimal debt. Um, I've got no debt except for my mortgage, actually mortgages. I've got two, two loans, but I have no debt. I have no other debt. So it's just, it's all in how you work your numbers. Just watch things fall into place. Well, so again, I, we talked about, you know, credit obviously affects home buying, 
But, you know, also I think a lot of people don't realize that credit now affects even renting a house or apartment or the ability to get utilities uh, to lease or buy a car and many other major purchases, especially as we think about people going through divorce. You know, and, and that woman that, you know, you mentioned earlier that maybe hasn't had to do any of the finances, hasn't had much in her name. She needs to know as early in this process as possible how her credit score is going to affect her ability to find a new place to live. Absolutely. There's a lot of things that people don't even realize are out there. So let's say you've got that stay at home mom and she's, you know, getting her first apartment on her own. And, you know, you're going to need you're going to need furniture. You're going to need bath towels, you're going to need credit, you're going to need all of that, you can actually piggyback off of somebody else. So I know in times of divorce and stuff like that, people lean on their family and hopefully their family is there to help them. Mm -hmm. There's there's always options of possibly getting added as an authorized user to a family member's credit card. And as long as that balance is low, you will obtain the full length of history of that account. So if that credit card has been open for five years, within a 30-day time frame, you'll have five years of positive history, which is the biggest piece of pie chart for your credit. So there's a lot of little things out there when people come to me and they're like, you can't help me. There's no way you can help me. Nobody can help me. I will. <laughs> let's, you will let's prove them wrong. Yeah, <laughs> prove you wrong. Let's, let's just put together a plan and go for it. Okay. Well, that sounds awesome. And you know, another thing that comes to mind is I'm a two times Dave Ramsey fan. I've done it twice. I know that there's a lot of people, I would used to be one of them, that thought, you know, I don't care about credit. I don't want to have, you know, credit. But so I'm just kind of curious if you would just really quickly mention for the other Dave Ramsey fans in the audience um, who think like I used to, that credit isn't important, how that only really works for people who are independently wealthy. So here, here's my take on Dave Ramsey, and I respect him. I do. I think he he has a good he's got a good theory. I actually took the Dave Ramsey coaching course. I paid it. I took the class. I did it. I took notes, passed all the tests with flying colors, got my certificate. I think that Dave Ramsey in his era was great, but credit is so needed now that it's just a different story. His daughter actually does something similar to him, but more along the lines for our generation that mm -hmm. needs credit more. So I think his theory is good, but again, yes, if you're independently wealthy, you don't care what your insurance rates are. You can go buy that car in cash, but for the average blue collar American, we need credit. We need to be able to show you know, that we have a pay history to be able to get that mortgage or get that lower insurance. Um, and insurance is a big one. I mm -hmm. switched my insurance and I saved $800 a year, which is $66 a month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it is a big deal. It does factor everything. Having those scores is life altering. So um, Dave Ramsey followers, just know that you can have good credit and not have debt. There is absolutely a way to have your cake and eat it too. Awesome. Well, and you know, obviously cutting up credit cards can, can be wise, but closing the accounts and thinking you don't need credit Maybe not so much. Absolutely. <laughs> I once, I once actually, I did that. Did you? <laughs> I closed an account <laughs> thinking, oh, I'm going to be, you know, helping my credit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't actually understand how credit worked at that point. But anyway, so, well, I, I think we've probably just about covered all we can for today on credit and budget coaching. But I'm wondering if there's anything else that you think might be important for us to talk about before we sign off. I just think... No dream is too big. Your goals are yours. Your feelings are yours. And this isn't something that you should hide from. It's scary, but there's always, always a way out. There's always a way to make it better. And if you just need some encouragement, I am absolutely more than happy to help. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Amy, for joining me to explore budget coaching and credit advising with people who need to know the importance of these issues when it comes to their divorce and their financial recovery after divorce. Listeners, I hope this was what you needed today to help you along in your divorce journey. If you want to connect with Amy, you can do so at... My phone number is 816-520-3506 or amysbudgetcoaching at gmail.com. Awesome. Do you have any social media pages that you... I do. Offer. You can look me up on Facebook. It's Amy Stetzler, S-T-E-T-Z-L-E-R. And just take a look. I got a business page. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm curious. Uh, one other thing that I thought of is how someone might work with you if, for example, they don't live in this area. 
I can help anybody in any state at any time. Okay, very good. You will find information about Amy and her services in today's show notes. If you feel that your next best step does involve credit repair or budget coaching, please give Amy a call and let her know that you heard her on the Starting Over Stronger show. If you feel you need to explore divorce coaching or you want to talk more about that RCSD real estate consulting or just buying or selling a home in Missouri or Kansas. And by the way, I can also refer you to another trusted RCSD realtor wherever you are. So email me at Annie at startingoverstronger.com if that is your need today. Thank you again for tuning in with us each week to talk about these important issues that matter to you as you face and recover from divorce. And lastly, remember, we all struggled through our divorces in ways that we couldn't have previously imagined. And here on the Starting Over Stronger show, every discussion that we have is about educating you and encouraging you that you are not alone and you do not have to go through this alone. And like I've said a million times, a massive ship on open waters can make even a one degree turn and end up in a totally different destination. And you can too. Adjust the steering wheel of your life, your divorce, your family, or your finances. There are people and resources that are prepared and passionate about being the life preserver that you need. While you're facing your divorce storm, reach out and ask for help during your divorce by calling in a new expert, shift your mindset ever so slightly, and as a result, you'll end up creating a life you love. I will just sign off now. And uh, one more thing, guys. Don't forget, take a moment now and find and follow Starting Over Stronger on Facebook, Instagram, your favorite podcast channel, and rate and share with anyone you know going through divorce. Your five-star ratings and positive reviews about the difference that we make for you makes all the difference in our ability to continue to provide you with quality content. So remember that as you're creating a life you love and you are starting over stronger, we are here for you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.